Okay, this afternoon I'm going to show you how I made these two beautiful paper pins. I first saw this technique done years ago at a convention when I met Kelly Perky, an extremely talented stamper, and it incredibly impressed me. I do finish mine a little bit differently. I use Crystal Effects as the finishing coating on this, where she uses layers of um, the spray acrylic lacquer. I am an attention deficit adult and I don't have time for that. So I wanted to make these, but I didn't want to have to take the amount of time that it took. So the butterfly here is from the level one set, God's Beauty. It's a current level one hostess set. And I'll hold it up for more detail. And the other one is the Fifth Avenue Floral Rose with the leaves from God's Beauty. The Fifth Avenue Rose is from the Manhattan Style Watch, a style watch that has some beautiful accessories currently available on it. One of the secrets to making a um, sturdy paper pin is the number of layers of paper. <clears throat> First I'm going to show you the paper pin that we're going to make. It's going to be a butterfly and we're going to use three pieces of colored layered paper. If you're using white paper, and I don't recommend the white, if you use white you need four or five layers of paper. And actually because this butterfly is so bold and has so much detail, I'm going to re-ink that. I'm going to actually over-ink this stays on pad. Stays on is an extremely necessary ingredient. This is a very permanent ink that gives you a nice black impression and of course it's waterproof. So I'm going to take this impression and two more pieces of paper and I'm going to cut it not extremely close but this is going to be as close as I need it for now for my next step. And of course I have another one here that I've already made. I want my butterfly to be 3D and so I needed to actually step um, repeat that step. So you can see I have two of these three layered pieces here. So the next thing I'm going to do is get my Mod Podge and my brush. A little bit of throwaway paper here. And be generous with the Mod Podge to make three layers. Remember, the only the first layer needs to be stamped. The other three, I'm sorry, the other two are going to be stuck together with it. And actually, when it dries, you can barely tell. For the next part, you got to do pretty quickly. You need to cut these three layers, leaving about an eighth of an inch. And the reason why we're cutting this now is because when the Mod Podge dries, it will hold its shape. And we, we're going to want to shape this and for now, Sorry, Mr. Butterfly. I'm going to be taking his antenna off and replacing them with little gold antennas. You can see I have my butterfly and it's very flexible and it will hold its shape. What I am going to do is I'm going to continue doing a little bit of detail cutting in here. and I'm separating the top wing from the bottom wing and the body from the bottom wing. And I'm going to use my fingers and mold the shape of this butterfly so that it mimics an actual butterfly in flight. 
And I'm just going to cut off anything that looks like a rough edge there. You got to be careful with this paper. You want to make sure that you don't rub off or scratch off the black. And then you need to repeat this with the second butterfly layer. Okay, <clears throat> I now have two butterflies here that will form the butterfly when it's put together. It'll form the sandwich. If you're going to color what you're doing, now would be a good time. You could also do it before you start. I'm using, um, the paper that I'm using is Barely Banana. The marker that I'm using that looks so orange is actually Apricot Appeal, which is a yellow with a lot of orange in it. I'm thinking, to me, this is a monarch butterfly. And I'm going to take pumpkin pie, the brush end of it, and just touch up the butterfly with the pumpkin pie for a more realistic coloring of it. Okay, while I'm waiting for my butterflies to dry, I'm going to do a second project. I'm going to do a, a rose from an outline stamp from the Manhattan Flower. I'm going to stamp three of them and stays on, re-inking each time on blush blossom paper. Okay. Of course the trick to this will be coloring it in without putting too much color on and of course you don't want to get the paper too wet. So the easiest way to do that would be with our markers. And what I'm going to do is start with my blush blossom marker on the blush blossom paper. And as you can see I'm just adding a little bit of color to each leaf starting from where the leaf <clears throat> goes back to the middle of the flower. Okay, so look at these inner folds. The middle of the flower is going to be darker and the edge of the leaf is going to be the, the lightest. So very carefully and with a light touch go around and add a little bit of color to each leaf leaving the edge of the leaf um, with no color or you know just the blush blossom which should be a lighter color. I am using the blush blossom marker and one of the things that I love about um, the Stampin' Up! markers is our soft subtles are terrific for right direct to paper without covering too much coverage um, and ruining what little color, you know, getting a little taste of color without covering your lines. Okay, so you can see that's very, very light application of color. What you're going to do is I, I would move on to the next one and do this while that one dries because what I'm going to do to get a more pink look to this but not over color it is that when this is completely dry you can go back over with the marker again in certain spots and you can see how much darker that area gets so you can actually get uh, darker tones inside a tone so darker shadows without having to move to another color and possibly taking the chance that you're going to go too dark. So there you go, you've got more. I don't know if I did a fabulous job at that. So I'll show you what I've done here. Is uh, This one's my crash and burn, too much color on it. But this one is finished the way that I would like it to be. And the reason why that I want three is I'm actually going to get one three level or three tiered rows out of this. This one down here only has the two layers of the blush blossom. So I did blush blossom in the edges. I'm sorry, not on the edges, on the inside of the rows. From the inside of where the leaf radiates out is where my color is. And then I'm going to take my pretty and pink and very, very sparingly around the edges here to add the color only where I want it to be. Actually, I grabbed the wrong pretty and pink. Um, marker that one's in really really bad shape okay so because on this paper the pretty and pink is really just too dark I'm only going around these edges and again I'm going to be coloring cutting out all three of these 
and I'll do that in a moment. Okay, now I'm ready to do the uh, gluing up. I've got my rose and I've got my two other pieces here. I've got my Mod Podge ready. Okay, and I'm going to start with my first layer, which is the lowest layer. I can't stress more about going all the way to the edge and using the Mod Podge generously. If you think you know you're in a rush and you're going to put a little less Mod Podge so it dries a little faster, it's really not a good idea. It's really best. You don't want the layers to come apart at the edges. And I probably even cut a little too close, but you should, you know, definitely have enough around the edges so that when you cut it, you have um, full coverage, all three layers. And actually, before I cut it, I'm just going to. This is going to be the very bottom layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that these roses, the edges are going to come down the way that I would like it to. So with that first little, I don't know what you call it, molding of the, um, the leaves. And because, of course, this is the lowest layer, so this is a layer that um, will least be seen really in the middle, but the edges will most be seen because the other layers that I put on top, I'm actually cutting away more of the outer rows for that 3D look. So I'm going to try to be, you know, more careful than clearly I'm not being here and bore you with this process. Okay, again, the rose is has a certain amount of time to be more malleable than other times. So I'm going to cut away some of this so that this part of the flower will, you could say, I've taken the flower and I'm starting to make it a little 3D just on its own. Okay, so I'll follow around the flower this way. Let's see if I could do that again. Do that here. Okay, and then I'm just going to take that sharp edge off of here. Okay, as I round that. And then just a little bit over here so it's a little more realistic. Realistically, a leaf. I'm sorry, a leaf. A petal of that rose. And this is where, if you did not get all the way down to the edge, these edges will come apart if you're not careful about putting enough Mod Podge on there. Okay, so I'm not making this too too wavy because this is going to be my lowest layer. I'm going to save more you know, the wavier parts for the inner parts of this rose that I'm going to cut out. Okay, so I have my four pieces here and I did not pull a fast one on you. I did have three roses. I had made a fourth one for the purposes of in case I made a mistake um, or if I wanted to change something drastically. So what I did was um, I had the three, and you could see how I cut out and made some of this 3D. Um, this is the next layer that fits on top of here. And then this fit on top of there. And then I thought it kind of was missing something. So I'm thinking with my last little rose that I had, my extra one, that that fit on top of there. And it's I can't turn it sideways, but I can bring it closer to the camera so you can see. But there you have my rose before I put it together. And you can see that fourth piece in the middle. I was very careful to cut that out. So if I want to, I can add more petals to this, um, more 3D petals if I feel like it. So it's not a bad thing to make extras. I, For example, I pulled this off of something else because I wanted to have a little leaf petal that I thought wasn't as 3D as I wanted it to be. You can see where that fits right there and just adds another layer of dimension and you can totally get carried away with this. So I'm going to put this aside. Each one of these layers is going to need to dry and I'm going to put it together and lacquer it and you will see in a moment how that will happen. Of course, the video will have elapsed a few minutes. Okay, I've decided that we need some leaves. Here's um, the leaf from the God's Beauty set. It is the level one hostess set that we made our butterfly from, our butterfly pin we're making from. So I 
stamped it actually twice. This is going to go behind the rows, and so I'm going to put that together, and then I have one, I have it stamped once, I'm going to layer it three times, and this is going to be for the butterfly. So we'll start with this, and you know the drill, we're going to generous with the Mod Podge. Don't be in a rush. You can put a light layer on or your pen will come apart in layers. Okay. I'm going to do two at the same time. I do usually work two at a time. And then I cut and mold and then do a few more. Which is why you see me doing several projects at a time because we're still waiting for that butterfly to be a little drier. And of course more time has in fact elapsed than you're seeing on the video. I would say from the time that I cut and mold something and allow it to dry can be anything from three or four hours to overnight. Depending upon if I'm in a rush and if you don't like to wait, just keep making more pins. Just keep doing the same of everything that you've been doing. I'm going to go back to this one and show you. I don't have to be careful with the um, inside of this because for the most part, this is going to be hiding behind the rows. In fact, this is going to be a platform for which the rose is going to sit on. I do need to be careful with the leaves, however. Um, because they're going to be peeking out. So I want to make sure they are cut properly and cut closely because these will be peeking out. So before I do my final cutting here, just see, judging by the rows, and you can see I'm only going to be seeing the parts of that rose that are peeking out, or I should say the leaves that are peeking out, and I might even get carried away and 3D some of these leaves, but maybe not. Anyway, so you can see you don't need to cut all of it, I'm only going to final cut the pieces over here that you're going to see. This will also further keep this a little more, um, what do you call it, secure um, onto the rows. Just less of trouble later on. The more finer this is, just the, the tougher that'll be to stay together. So there we go. I'm going to let them dry. Okay, I have started to put the crystal effects on the butterfly and how I did it. I've, I've done the back of this one now. That's why that's all wet. Um, the way that I've done it is I did the backs first. You can see. The back of that's all nice and shiny. And when that was dry, I did the front. And I take the crystal effects and I actually use the tip of it and just squirt that right on. Making sure that I cover the edges too. Because remember I said if you're really going to use this as a pin, you really do need to seal it. And, uh, depending upon how confident I was, um, when you lacquer it, you can actually hold it together at that time. Um, you can actually put it together now, although I like to wait until it's done and put something even stronger than uh, this liquid glow, or sorry, crystal effects. So I'm going to put it down on a surface that's not, that I can get this off of pretty easily while it dries. Um, of course you know that Crystal Effects is also a phenomenal glue. It will hold pretty much anything together. But um, with the butterfly, I want these two layers to be 
a little apart from each other, and so I'm going to probably use a dimensional. I learned the incredible binding powers of the Crystal Effects glue when a couple of years ago, coming back from convention, it broke open in my luggage, and everything that was with it is now forever preserved in a crystal mountain. So, okay, so I'm going to do these. Again, when you're working with this, you might want to choose a background or um, a surface that is um, not going to, you're not going to want to use again. <clears throat> so let me get scrap paper. And sometimes I even get um, aluminum foil. So I'm going to spread this on really thick. And this is a lot of surface, actually, to put this on. So sometimes I will take an inexpensive brush, something, you know, that I wouldn't mind ruining. Not that I like to ruin anything. And just brush this on evenly. You want to make sure that you do this while it is still very wet, because you don't want brush strokes in what you're doing. You want a nice, clean, shiny finish. So if you feel that you've gone too far, and that you still have brush strokes in it, um, you can actually just add some more crystal effects right directly to it. But again, going over large portions of it, I've got this middle here is indented. I don't know if you can tell. So the crystal effects is going to want to lie down in the middle, and we don't really want that. Because I'm working with a brush, it's a little easier for me to make sure that I do get the edges. And this is the bottom layer of the rose. So the most important parts are this outer edge. And at the end, I'm going to do the back of this rose. I'm also going to seal that with crystal effects. Okay, so I think when you have a lot of crystal effects on it, you can actually hold it sideways and let it run into itself. Okay, and I'm going to put that down if I can let go of it. It is now stuck on my hands forever and ever. Okay, the other ones are small enough, so I believe that I can just go ahead and do the crystal effects directly to it. If you don't want it to be a pin, and you just like this 3D effect, you could do this same effect with probably one layer of paper. If you're doing this for a card front, you can you know, cut out these layers and um, use the crystal effects, and you will probably get a fine embellishment for a card. The number of layers that we're doing here is probably overdue for anything but something that you're going to be wearing. But these do make nice embellishments to add to cards and, and things. Even boxes, they make boxes. Okay, so click on that. Okay, the butterfly is now dry, and what I did was, I don't know if you could see, I put the row of rhinestones, completely copying Kelly Perky, and I have the back of it, this will be the bottom of it, and the back of it I have put on already the pin backing. I'm going to secure the two together with glue dots. If I can hang on to one long enough. You can see I'm just going to pull these apart a little bit so we can see down the middle. Cut off this bottom one. I didn't do it before because I didn't know until very end whether or not which, which side, which one would come out better. 
And it's still a little bit wet, so it's still a little bit pliable. <clears throat> because this is going to be a pin, I also did the back of it to completely seal it in. Oops, and tomorrow it'll be perfect. One last thing to add to it is I had cut off the antenna. So I made two little antenna here. You could see with little diamonds. So I have my rhinestones on. And how that was done is you take <clears throat> this, uh, I think it's 24 gauge wire, and you make one little loop, little circle, see? And then you make a V, and then another little loop. And this is where our craft and rubber cutting scissors come in handy. I'm just going to secure that loop down. Use the craft and rubber cutting scissors to cut this off. And you have two little loops that you could kind of leave like that, or you could add a rhinestone to. And that's it. And I'm going to, I will show you kind of how I pick up rhinestones because it's actually not easy to do. Let's turn this around. Picking up a rhinestone, especially the little tiny ones that I like to work with. If you take something pointed, and I usually work with this, this is kind of my sacrificial hat pin here. You can see all the glue on it. Um, I take some of the crystal effects, and usually there's enough of it all over the place where I've been working that I don't even have to do this, but I take the tip and I touch it in the puddle so that this is just a little tacky and pick up a rhinestone with any luck it's the color I want. You can pick up the rhinestone on its face with the front of this. So I've got, again, put it in there Tack it down, tap it down a little, a little tacky, pick up the rhinestone, and place it into here. And actually, I forgot a really big step. Okay, I'm going to put crystal effects on that area, just around the edges of this. Of course, I either end up with too much or too little. And I'm going to try that again. I'm going to stick get this tacky, pick up a rhinestone, just tapping it gently and putting it down onto the puddle of crystal effects. And as sometimes will happen, you might need a second something to get that off. So fight with it. And of course, any better eyesight than I to know that you've done it properly. Anyway, you're going to set the two of them and I'll spare you the gory details and promise you I am able to do it, but in an extremely spastic manner. I am going to add these antenna to my friend the butterfly like so and there you have the butterfly with antenna Okay, and if you're wondering what happened to the rose, I actually did put it together while it was still wet, um, and it still is a little tacky. I put all four layers together and just placed one on top of the other because as I um, bent the leaf or the um, petal edges, a puddle formed in the middle, and so I thought puddle was perfect, and um, so there's that, and I will add some rhinestones to it.